Hey coaches, Coach Simpson. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time visiting, if you have additional questions after watching this one or would like to watch more videos, you can subscribe to my channel at the end of this video. Something will pop up or you can just push the button. If you have more questions, you can find me at fbcoachsimpson at gmail.com with an email, fbcoachsimpson on Twitter and a lot of Facebook groups as well. Or if you know you would like to get more in-depth research, I've got a lot of materials. I actually have a playbook available now and you can get all of that if you'll go to fbcoachsimpson.com. Today, I wanna to talk about living in one formation. I don't know, I know that they didn't do real well last year, but a couple years ago, Sean McVay was the offensive guru of the NFL. And one of the things that a lot of people maybe didn't pay attention to or didn't notice, the average fan didn't, is that he really lived in very simple formations what I would almost call a condensed twins with a tight end look, ran a ton of wing T based offense. So of course I was very interested in this sort of following him. Today I wanna to talk to you about the advantages of living in one or few formations. Obviously we as coaches want the ability to get into lots of different things to cause advantages for our offense. However, I wanna challenge you that if you are putting in an offense if you put a formation in, you need to be able to run, I would say at least 80 to 90% of your entire offense in that formation. So for example, I just gave a tight end trips look. So if you line up in this set, you're gonna know really quickly what the defense is doing. How are they handling a tight end with nobody over there? Are they locking him up? Okay, or are they playing extra guys over here to stop the run? Or are they giving you kind of an easy surface over here? The tight end will also cause the front to move. Are they gonna cause their color front strength to your tight end? More than likely, yes. Or are they gonna call it to the field or even to the trips? You'll know really quickly if you live in one formation, more than one or two plays, what the defense is doing and how they're calling things. Also, I put trips up because trips is kind of one of those defensive coordinators day two or day three start putting in all their different trips things they're gonna do. Most of the time, if you go tight end over here and trips over here, you're gonna cause the defense to go split coverage and you're gonna get a good idea of what they can run to the trips, okay? We live in this formation and about three other formations a lot because we feel we can run most of our offense through it. If I run a lot of motions and a lot of shifts and a lot of things, that usually means I haven't really found what I'm looking for yet. But if you live in one formation, to me that usually signifies I know and our players know where you're gonna line up and how you're going to read what we're doing. Now, go back to our example of the Rams. The Patriots show that you can't just do the same thing over and over. You have to have some variety when they beat them in the Super Bowl and, and held that high-powered offense to not very many points. However, most of the season through there, the reason Sean McVay was doing this was to, so that he would know how the defense was gonna line up every time because he could get in one formation and run his entire offense from it. Too often as coaches, we're gonna get in this set and run these eight plays, and we're gonna get in that set and run these six plays, and we're gonna get in this set, we wanna run power read, and we're gonna get in that set if we're gonna do whatever it is. I think the power of most good offenses is when they can run everything they have out of multiple sets. And in order for that to work, especially at the high school level, you don't need to have a lot of plays. You, know, you need to be able to get into a lot of sets or you can go the other direction. You can put more wrinkles into your plays with less formation, which is what we're talking about today. Uh, the last couple of seasons, I've kind of abided by that philosophy where we've been in one or two or three formations mainly, uh, and then we've been able to run more things from them. Because what happens is, now I know where the eyes of the defense are going. So if we get in this set, let me give you an example here, and we get a nine technique and a three technique, and we get your traditional four front look, okay? So now I'm gonna figure out, that's usually the front you're gonna get in a four front, three front be a little different. Generally, you're gonna have a roll down something here, could be a backer, could be whatever. Now what are they doing? Okay, are they gonna overcompensate back over here to the trips and go backer here? corner, safety, safety, something along those lines, and lock you up over here? 
or are they going to keep this kid kind of too high and now I have three on two? Well, I'll know pretty quickly what they're going to do. But if I'm bouncing around in different formations, they could have lined up wrong. They could have had something because it was to the field, it was a different look. But if I get in this set four or five or six times within about a 15 place, you know, kind of span, I'm going to know roughly what their philosophy is to stop me. If I get this look, then they're trying to stop us from running the ball over here. And we're going to have to know our adjustment would be throw the ball because of the numbers. If they decide to get into a look like this, okay, well then they're trying to stop the trips, run the ball, run the ball to the strong side. And you only are able to do this because we have a limited amount of plays. I mean, a normal offense coordinator is going to get 60 to 80 plays, maybe 90 plays. You're really pushing the tempo up in a game. If you're running 15, 16 formations, you start doing the math on that, and you're not going to be in a lot of formations very often. You're not going to always know what the defense is doing. You see this even if you're not a tight end wing team like me with a lot of teams that want to live in you know, the two by two and go really, really fast. And why do they want to do that? Because now they can move quicker because they're in one formation. And for the defense, in my experience, if the defense has multiple looks, they're probably not great at any of those looks. The defenses that give us the problems are the ones that have one look and they're pretty good at that. And so all I wanted to do today was kind of challenge you guys to think about as you're putting in sets with your team, can you run every play out of every set? Or can you run most of your plays out of every set? Why are you putting a new set in? What are you gaining? Okay, does that match what your philosophy needs to be? So one of the things I really had a hard time with as an offensive coordinator and, and still have to fight the urge for is, you know, I'm pretty good up here on a marker board. I can put 100 plays in and a lot of formations in. How much time can I actually teach that to my kids? What advantage am I gaining? So really want to challenge you guys today to think about what's your home, you know, what's your main formation you're going to run that you run everything out of. What's one more formation and possibly what's one more formation and then you need to live in those formations. You can tinker around with other things, but those formations need to be the ones you spend the majority of your time practicing. You spend your majority of the time researching what a defense is going to give you and you spend the majority of your time repping plays just throughout the week. Okay. Again, guys, if you get more questions, you can email me at fbcoachsimpson at gmail.com. you want more information on like exactly what I do offensively, you can go to my website, fbcoachsimpson.com. Or you can look me up on Twitter and just shoot me a DM and I'll try to get back with you. If you haven't already, I appreciate if you'd like the video or subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try to do at least a couple of these a week, depending on what our season looks like here in Arkansas.